Nate, my man. Hold on, I'll, I'll get some pineapple. <laughs> Sorry, hey, man. Bro. Um, How's it going? Uh, uh, all goods, all goods, man. Um, happy birthday, happy birthday, and also big love to Leilani. Yeah, isn't isn't she awesome? Like like her, yeah. her, her mind where she, where it goes, speaking with such eloquency. Like I think we as a Pacific region movement should double treasure that um, that mindset. Um, per, per, per personalities like Leilani, and personalities like yourself, brother um, <laughs> Nate, one hundred percent. I love it when 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 people are so specific, and this is just how people. Uh, strike me, you know, like when you when we met in Madrid, you know, like oceans were your thing. That was your niche. Um, mm -hmm. Also, you're from PNG, West Papua. It, it is is a, is a very important point, and I think like Brooke is after this. Like I, like she she is also like I think everyone in this whole show is is supporting West West Papua struggle and the way mm -hmm. that you brought that forward into the top twenty five conversation whereas it's usually it's climate change but not about decolonization not about mm -hmm. oppression and everything else I, I very much appreciate for your mindset for bringing that forward <laughs> and i think that's also why i loved um i i, I oh yeah i think I, I i i danced a little bit when you said yes i'll be on the show <laughs> um nate uh, <laughs> uh don't don't tell it to everyone else the De definitely not to india and and and, and the whole crew uh definitely not to, to the kia uh, and and because otherwise she'll she make me dance again um nate uh where is indigenous knowledge going right now um i'm sure you have some kind of idea uh about it um but before you go into that uh, what how did you synthesize that question how did you deconstruct that question um when when you first read it or heard it yeah i guess so yeah th i mean there's there's a couple of things right in that in mm -hmm. terms of like what do we mean by indigenous knowledge um is it just simply the things that we know or or is it the kind of ways that we uh relate to and understand and come to knowledge right the the kind of systems and processes by which we we encounter and engage with the world um, and, and definitely in that kind of respect, I think we're, we're seeing a bit of a, a revival um, in terms of, um, and, and perhaps I'm biased because, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I have Pacific students in my class and, and I'm seeing them come through and get really um, radical and concerned about things and, and learning about the Anthropocene and stuff like that. Um, but in terms of that, yeah, this, this revival and this, this focusing um, on, on the kind of importance of both the environment and, and the way in which the knowledge from that environment is very particular um, mm -hmm. to Indigenous groups and how that in its particularity is really important for us going forward in terms of bringing together all these diverse and different, but also fundamentally kind of facing the same problems. Um, we bring these stories together. And I think that coming together of stories um, that sharing the the capacity to be in spaces like COP and, and to hear about the Arctic where their, their ice is melting and that's precisely why the sea levels are rising in our, in our villages and on our beaches and stuff. You know, the, the interconnectedness of those stories and the, the capacity to weave them together. Mm. Um, I think we're definitely seeing a revival and, and mediums like this, right, where we can have, you know, a Papuan in New Zealand speaking to, to indigenous communities all around the world, you know, just, just these kind of fascinating conversations that we can have. Mm. The, Nate, um, also like very being very conscious that a lot of non-Indigenous people are watching right now or watching afterwards. You started off with a, what is Indigenous knowledge? Um, the what was the 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 um, yeah the the the, the difference in, in your view in your view traditional knowledge Indigenous knowledge. Yeah. So so I think like first and foremost is this grounding of relationship, right? Our, our, our knowledge comes from our environments. Um, you know, my people have been on our beach for hundreds if not thousands of years and, and have knowledge built in the cycles of that environment. They understand um, certain things like, you know, uh, I was just learning about El Nino last night, like just trying to like learn how that system works and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and, and our ancestors, our elders, they already had these kind of implicit knowledges where they could recognize these patterns and these cycles. Um, and, and I think that pattern recognition, that capacity to understand our environments and how they shift and change um, 
and that relationship to the environment and relationship to people is is the foundation of of that indigenous knowledge. And I guess um, one of the one of the ways I'm kind of navigating that, for example, writing writing a PhD in a in a very Western um, kind of academia kind of setting, you know, you you have to navigate. Um, I've, I've you know working on methodology like gut feeling, right? Mm, like mm, how gut mm. feeling can be part of your methodology and research project. Um, because it's how you gauge whether or not the relationship between you and the person you're engaging with is all good or not. You know, you have this kind of internal gut feeling that helps you navigate that. And so I think, yeah, these, these, it's, it's a different way of relating to knowledge and, and to people as well. And, um, ooh, am I? Yep. Yep. You're good. You're good. Oh yeah. Cool. Uh, sorry. And, um, particularly with, um, relating to knowledge, like one of the things is, um, you know, whether or not all knowledge should always be accessible all the time to everyone. And this is kind of an interesting thing um, navigating at the university around whether or not certain bits of um, knowledge should be shared um, mm -hmm. or, or can be shared and when it's appropriate to share those knowledges and stories. And so, yeah, it's kind of this, this weird line to blend in, but the importance of it, I think, is fundamentally that relationship is, is primary and comes first. Yeah, uh, Nate. Something that you really want to talk about, and also like a little bit of segue to the the, the ne next guest, obviously, is uh, you wanted to talk about indigenous knowledge versus or or, or in connection with um, engagement from indigenous youth. Um, mm. What are your thoughts? Um, maybe concerns, maybe or opportunities. Yeah. So so I mean, I'm, I might be a bit biased in this. I was kind of wanting to plug. Um, some of the work of, uh, as I, as I kind of mentioned and was put on the profile, you know, I love Dungeons and Dragons and tabletop mm -hmm. role-playing okay. games. Yeah. Um, and, and these kind of games is a way for, for storytelling, um, for, for passing on these kind of messages and, and, and stories to our youth, um, in ways that kind of have shifted and changed and develop as, as we go and as, as everyone goes, um, yeah, so so you know, like one of the things that I'm I'm was was working on at the moment was like a um, a kind of tabletop game, a Dungeons and Dragons game where um, there's stuff going on with the stars, and so mm -hmm. to I wanted to use that to teach a little bit of some of the um, indigenous kind of star uh, systems that we have um, in in my village, kind of some of the the, the uh, constellations that we recognize and stuff, and so you can put them into the game. And, and you're kind of putting the foundations of this knowledge in, in a way that's kind of interactive and enjoyable. So I think absolutely, um, you know, not just pushing to, to gamify or, or to turn all our knowledge into to games and stories, but to recognize the importance of storytelling as, you know, Leilani was kind of pointing out and, and as the podcast and these kind of things are, are all demonstrating is the importance of being able to communicate narrative and story and, and, and share in that. And I think, you know, <laughs> My, my personal preference for tabletop role-playing games means that, that uh, I see those as kind of a way of doing it, um, as mm -hmm. a way of, of, of talking through things. And also through, you know, online games, um, trying to emphasize kind of ways to, to teach Indigenous culture in, in appropriate and proper ways um, yeah. through there. But also, you know, as I said, kind of balancing that with the idea that not everything should be accessible for everyone. So it's a, it's a tight line to balance. And, yeah, I think... Actually, one of the things that that kind of um, also struck me with regards to youth and stuff, and um, you know, our schooling system, I just I just keep coming back to the fact that we get like new teachers every year. You know, you don't have like a singular kind of mentor figure um, through the education system or these kind of um, people that that walk with you through through that knowledge journey. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it's mainly your peers. And so that was something I've kind of been thinking about because I, I do work with um, children and kind of um, have done social services work with children that have, have experienced some pretty rough stuff. But, you know, I yeah. also teach at the university. Um, and it's just really interesting that, you know, those lessons can go back and forth and feed into each other. Um, and, and they're really important to feed into each other. And there's nothing particular about those age groups, you know, the relationships that we establish in that kind of knowledge journey um, I think should be lifelong, you know, and, and to, to kind of partition this year of your life into this teacher being the one who's guiding you through it, as opposed to kind of 
having these ongoing relationships with mentors and, and, and elders. I think those are really right. important things that we need to kind of uh, establish. Yeah, and Nate, Nate but, um, <clears throat> in, in closing, uh, let me help you out a little bit. Um, it's, it's not, in, I applaud you and encourage you to do what you're doing in terms of like what you explained with Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. I, have the, I have the same thing with Minecraft. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I watch, I watch indigenous indigenous kids, youth play Minecraft, and it is, yeah. um, it is not about transfer of knowledge. It is about like like learning your own knowledge, you know, like preserving mm -hmm. it in, in in a way. I'm not saying gamifying, but gamifying yeah. learning, gamifying learning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that, that's that's what it is, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. By all means, man, Dun Dungeons and Dragons, I, I see the connection, you know, definitely, I see yeah. it 100%. Yeah, yeah, you know? and, you know, there are indigenous games that are kind of uh, running like this at the moment. Um, the game Edrigor is, like, built in kind of Lakota mythology and by, by a Lakota um, game kind of developer and stuff. So these things are there, and, and they're great for, for revival and, and encouraging these conversations and stories. So, yeah, by all means. You know, it, it doesn't have to be um, scary. It can be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Amen. Mm -hmm. You're preaching to the choir here. Um, <laughs> I, I, um, we, we should definitely, we should let, let, let's catch, catch up at some point, talk more about this with, with gamifying, mm -hmm. learning, indigenous knowledge, like the whole Delta. Let, let, mm -hmm. let's, let's do something about that. In, in the yeah, future. for sure. Nate, Absolutely. Thanks so much for, for being on awesome. our show, man. Cheers. I really no appreciate, appreciate it. Yeah, yeah no, cheers, awesome. Man. Cheers. Right. Catch you. Have a good one. Catch you up.